Hello everyone, my name is Monica Merrill and I'm one of your neighbors here in Peters Township. I'm also on the board of directors for the Washington Symphony Orchestra. Now last year was very difficult for performing arts organizations, so it's my pleasure to be here with some special guests to reintroduce you to the WSO. We say that the WSO is something wonderful in Washington County because of the high caliber performances that our musicians present. Now many people have heard of the WSO already. They performed at the Peters Amphitheater in summer of 2019, and some of you may have attended that concert. It was a great show. But to others of you, especially new people in the township, you may be surprised to hear that Washington County has its own first-rate symphony orchestra. Because the WSO still seems to be a secret from some people, we're going to change that with this program. So let me introduce my guests who will talk about the WSO and share some exciting news about the upcoming season. First, please welcome Dr. Hugo Eikatch. Dr. Eikatch, he's the artistic director and principal conductor for the WSO. He also has a day job as a professor at Cal U and a dean, dean of, of graduate studies. Graduate mm -hmm. studies. That's right. Yes, now that Cal U has merged, he's going to be very, very busy, but he's still going to be conducting. Also with us is Adam Schaefer. Adam is our general manager at the WSO. He's been with us since 2015. He handles everything, all the daily ins and outs, all the operational things, concert planning, writing grants, writing to donors, things of that nature, everything that's needed to keep the WSO running. Anything that doesn't involve playing a musician or waving a baton, that's there what you I go. do. So. There you go. <laughs> that sounds great. Playing so an instrument, I think I said playing, playing a an musician. instrument, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. neither, neither he nor I are musically inclined. We just support the WSO. So Adam, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about the history of the Washington Symphony Orchestra. Well, you know, I started in 2015, but the WSO is way older than that. Started in 2002, June to be exact, uh, playing for a small audience at a local church. And it's grown since then. You know, we've moved venues a few times until now we get audiences six, 700 people. Um, very proud of that. You know, our musicians have grown. We have a handful of musicians that have been with us from the beginning or near the beginning, but we've seen a lot of talented people come through our ranks throughout the years. Um, you know, it, it's just a wonderful community organization, and this marks the beginning of our 20th season. Uh, last season, our 19th, was all digital, so we're very excited to get out there again and do a live season. Sounds good. So, Dr. Eyecatch, when did you join the WSO? Well, uh, first off, only my students call me Dr. Eyecatch, so mm. you go please. <laughs> and anyone who knows me knows that uh, such formalities are not necessary. I started with the WSO actually back in 2004. I was asked to, to be a guest soloist. I, I sang and uh, sang with the symphony, had a great time, and at the time, Dave Owens was the founder and the conductor. And he knew that I also conducted. I worked with the McKeesport Symphony Orchestra at the time. And he said, hey, would you like to come and be a guest conductor? So I guest conducted. I think that was 2004. And, uh, yeah. Either, yeah. and uh, we did a cartoon capers concert. So we used um, cartoons that we projected while we played music to it. So most of us may, well, most of people of my generation learned classical music through Bugs Bunny. Isn't that funny? Isn't that, it's the truth, you know. I, oh, that's the uh, rabbit of Seville. No, actually, it's the barber of Seville. But <laughs> um, uh, so I think a lot of our love uh, for classical music came in that medium, and we did that for our first concert that I guest conducted. It was a lot of fun. It was a success. And the board got together and said, let's hire this guy and bring him in as our conductor. And you Dave, made a good impression. I, I must have, I suppose. Yeah. Or at least I had fun, if nothing else. So, so you conduct, so tell us about all the musicians that make up the orchestra. Give me some idea of what that composition is. Well, I think one of the, the most, um, I think you said something wonderful. One of the things that makes True. it wonderful is it is ours. The musicians by far are local musicians who maybe are a high school music teacher by day or maybe a dental hygienist or an accountant, and they're a musician by night and they have a great love of music, they have a facility you know, with their in instrument, a certain amount of expertise. 
And they dedicate every Wednesday night and a whole lot of hours at home when no one's watching mm -hmm. to put this music together. So the first off, the, the vast majority is local folk. You'll see them, like I said, in, in Walmart, you know, <laughs> or wherever, and uh, they're ours. And then, you know, we do supplement with uh, professional musicians, if you will, especially within the strings. Mm -hmm. So we may have 20 volunteer string players or 25, mm -hmm. and then we bring in another 20 um, ringers, if you will, you know, professionals that play with the, the Wheeling Symphony or they play with the Pittsburgh Opera Orchestra, that type of thing, to bolster our ranks. And uh, we have some very accomplished um, principal players uh, that, that are, are also in that professional realm. Um, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a mix. It's a mix of professional and volunteer, primarily volunteer though. And we do all original repertoire and it takes us five or six rehearsals uh, over a month and a half to get up to the performance um, quality that we want to have, um, whereas maybe a fully um, professional orchestra might take two rehearsals or one <laughs> rehearsal, right? So we're very proud of the product we put out and we have a lot of fun doing it. Well, I had an interesting um, question though about the fact that not only do you have adult volunteer musicians, you have students. So talk a little bit about that because I think some of the people watching and some of the students listening might be interested. Yeah, well that that's germane to who we are. It's part of our mission uh, to educate, inspire, uh, educate, inspire, and entertain, entertain, and entertain yeah. right? Not necessarily in that <laughs> to order. Engage the community. Yes, engage the community. certainly engage the community. And part of that education uh, is, is, is right at the forefront of what we do. And we are going to work with as many students as we can. We have a number of programs that do that. We have students, high school players, that uh, those overachieving students that just want to do more than their high school ensembles offer they will come and play with us. They're a part of the group normally. And then we have one designated concert where we lobby high school students to come play with us side by side. It's a side by side concert. Uh, we normally do that in March. Uh, it, traditionally, that's when we've done it. And uh, we have a concerto competition. So we'll have one high school, generally, it, it, could, be, it could be middle school, but generally it's a high school student who um, auditions they get a, a nice little scholarship towards their, their, um, their studies, and they perform with the orchestra with us backing them up. Nice. So what a great experience to have a whole orchestra behind you. And so there's a number of different uh, things we do. In addition, we have free tickets to music students because we want them to be a part of what we're doing. And realistically, 30 years from now, some of us aren't going to be here, and they need to be here to continue this. That sounds good. And a few years ago, we, got, we opened up the concerto composition to vocalists, and we got so many talented vocalists from across the county, uh, some from right here in Peters Township, uh, that we had our own vocal competition, and we do that traditionally with our, our May concert now. So we have two, two youth competitions. And you know, there, there's at least one student I can think of, a string player from Peters Township playing with us right now regularly, who started in the side-by-side -side program. And that's what's great about the side-by-side -side program. We identify talent uh, that can, can grow with us. You know, if a student is really interested and uh, really capable of playing with the orchestra, then we invite them to join uh, for the entire season. And th that's happened several times in the past. And, we have people that started as students that we keep in touch with uh, to this day. Even through college and adulthood. Absolutely. Absolutely. That sounds great. And we constantly have student performers also as guest artists. So we'll have uh, a choir from one of our high schools. Uh, we'll have uh, guest student dancers that will dance along while we play. Uh, so th it's a regular part of our formula. And, and one person I'm thinking of, we, he was little drummer boy when he was, what, nine? Yeah. He's now a regular player and a board member. So <laughs> it's, he's spent his, That's a progression his entire for sure. life with the uh, WSO. And uh, it, it's just a great, great community thing. You know, you, you won't have these opportunities with every organization like ours. And we're, we're proud to offer them to the community. I think that's a very important part of what the WSO does. So tell us now a little bit about the upcoming concert. There's some news about a change venue for this concert and give us a little bit of information about some of the other changes. Well, we're really excited about the venue. You know, we, we've been at Trinity High School for years. We'll be there again in March and May. We love playing there. People know us from there. But, you know, the, the, these are different times, you know, the pandemic and we're looking, you know, what's the way to maybe make this a little bit safer and a little bit accessible. And the Washington County Fairgrounds opened up and it's, it's gonna be a great venue. You know, it's, it's big, it's spacious, it is indoors. We're not gonna be out in a barn, you know, 
hay or anything, you know, the cement floor. Uh, very nice building, but it's going to be big enough to distance. You want to sit over by yourself with your family, you want to sit up front, you can make that choice. Very flexible space, so I think everyone will feel safe and at home and have a great time in that space. And we're very excited, you know, the parking's great, uh, easy to find, it's right off North Main Street, Washington, so it's only a couple miles from our usual performance space. So very excited to try out this new space and see how everybody likes it, but uh, definitely um, it's going to be very accessible space that everyone can enjoy. Oh, that sounds great. There may be a little bit of hay. <laughs> there might be a little I'm bit I'm hoping hay. that we can perform for seniors and uh, students and cows and sheep, sheep and, and, and cows. <laughs> <laughs> I think a live manger set would be wonderful, right? Oh, there you right? go. And we oh, could do yeah. that at the fairgrounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it, it's a lot of things. And, yeah. it, and it truly goes with our personality of we are an orchestra of the people. And the Washington County Fairgrounds, if you've gone to the, the big, you know, uh, county fair, it, it, it's a big deal for the whole county. Sure. And we're touching people that might not know that we exist or know that we do this. And we're hopefully, we're going to encourage some of them to come to a familiar venue and see something new. And maybe they will be new friends of our family. And we want people to know the fairgrounds exist. You know, they've yeah. been great through this whole process. And we want people to know that they host events year round and uh, are a great facility, a great resources right here in with, uh, in Washington County, they're, they're more than just the, the fair in the summer. They're an event center open year round for all different types of events, all different types of people. And we hope that you know, by us being there, you know, more organizations will check them out and use that great space. That sounds great. So let's get down to the meat of some of the other changes. Tell us about ticket prices and one big change that people will hopefully be excited to hear. Well, ticket, cha ticket prices aren't changing in the sense that you know, they're 17 to $22, 17 for students and um, seniors. seniors, and then 22 for everybody else. But the big change is, you know, anybody 12 and under now gets in for free, and free tickets for those uh, students. And then for 12 and up, uh, if they're a music student, all they have to do is put their um, information in at the ticket table, uh, their music teacher's name, school, and so forth and they get a free ticket as well. So if you have a large family or even just have one child, uh, it's a great benefit to be able to bring them free of charge, introduce them to some fine music and a holiday tradition. That would be a great thing for families for the Christmas concert. We've heard in the past sometimes the ticket prices are a little much if you have two or three or four kids, but that would be a big benefit for families. Oh, Plus absolutely. we also offer group discount which can be, the information can be found on the website. So yes. there's some additional savings that could happen. Yes, just give our office a call and we could work with you to bring your group there. We've had different groups from churches or fraternal organizations come mm -hmm. and you do get a little bit of a discount. Uh, it's an easy way, that way one person can just order all the tickets and pass them out at a group, group or club meeting. And th that's not just for, for ho, 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 that's for any of our concerts. So. Perfect. <laughs> That's the name of our concert, by the way. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho with the WSO. <laughs> oh, that I, I didn't realize <laughs> that. Even it. Yeah, that people would be a little bit lost, but, uh, you know, I, I was going to, I was throwing around ways. That's the only concert so, okay, title so. that, that remains the same year after year. Is ho, ho, ho with the WSO. Yeah. Well, I was thinking the other day when I was writing, I was like, that's Triple H, just like the WWE wrestler. I wonder if we can have no, some no, kind no, of part. No, no, no. <laughs> so, so tell us, though, first of all, you can get tickets online by going to the website. You can buy tickets at two of the local libraries, Peters Township and Citizens Library. You can buy them at the door. Yes. At the door, cash, check, but just no. cash or check at the door. Uh, credit card, you just can pull out your phone via our show clips, show clicks third party app and just get them there. Uh, but we, we don't have uh, credit cards at the door just because of the Wi-Fi issues and so forth. Uh, but there's so. no extra charge for buying online. No, there is not. That's there's good no to charge know. to the consumer for buying online. Uh, it's quick and easy, you can do it up to a few minutes before the concert. Okay, one other thing about tickets. Um, I understand that Washington Financial has again made a generous donation to the symphony to enable other people who might not normally come to a concert to attend. Can you talk a little bit about that well, program? Absolutely, uh, Washington Financial has been helping us do this for years for the underserved populations in our community. Uh, we work with several organizations, uh, human services organizations, social services organizations throughout Washington County and you know we give those organizations blocks of free tickets to bring their constituents uh, who otherwise 
wouldn't be able to afford it, wouldn't be able to get a ride there. And it's been, it's been great. It's transformed some people's lives. Uh, it's given them an outlet to culture that they wouldn't otherwise have. And Washington Financial, you know, realizes the need and they've been funding this program for several years. So, you know, if you, if you have an organization, if you know of an organization and we've never contacted you, please, you know, go to our website, give us a call. Uh, we'd be happy to have you on board and bring your constituents to the, to the symphony. That sounds great. So, Hugo, let's turn back to you. As the artistic director, you're responsible uh, for deciding on concert themes and then picking the repertoire for the concerts, the actual music pieces. So tell us a little about the process. Well, I, I think first of all, I realized that I don't know everything. Oh, good. So I put smart people around me and creative people who have great ideas about concert themes. And we'll meet and we'll talk about different ideas. We usually come up with some sort of theme or concept of an idea and then we tend to suit repertoire that fits that, that theme. And these are the musicians themselves? Y yes, predominantly musicians. Uh, Adam is there as well because we may have a great idea, but he says, well, I don't know how well we'd be able to sell that. Mm. Right. Well, because ninety-nine percent of our audience aren't musicians. They're people who love music, but they don't play. They love to listen to it, but they don't play. And we take we take suggestions from anybody. You know, people have called me sometimes after seeing one of our concerts and say, "Hey, did you ever play this, this, and this?" I'll tell you go. I'll tell the musicians, and we'll look it up and look. Hey, we can get that arrangement pretty easy, right, and we right. incorporate it. So one thing you're pointing out, though, you don't just play classical music. Oh, it's no. not no stodgy every, every concert symphony music. We, a lot of organizations like ours, though, you know, we have a Pops concert in March, and we have an All Classics concert in October. We mix it up every time. You know, we, we center more on the theme than just the style of music. That sounds great. So tell us a few <coughs> past themes, and did you have, ever have a favorite, like your, your most oh favorite? Oh my gosh, we've had, we've had so 20 many. 20 years worth. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. in love with love. You know, we're doing love music. Some of it is classical, some of it is a popular, popular. nature. We did a, a rock concert some years ago. It was so popular, we're doing it again in March. So we did everything from Beethoven, who was a rock star in his time, to Freddie Mercury sure. and Queen, you know, and David Bowie. So you go to a symphony concert, you don't expect to hear David Bowie, but you do with us because that's what we do. And every one of our concerts are really more of a show than a concert, and there's something for everyone. One of the ones I liked best was Scary Music, and you actually had a special composition that was um, produced that was normally electronically right. digitally, right. digitally produced and then orchestrated for right. the orchestra. That was one of my favorites. Well, it's fun. We look for source material and we'll find something on YouTube and I will track down the composer who may live nice. in Ireland and I'll get a hold of him and I'll say, hey, I love your music. I want to do it. And he'll say, well, I never wrote it for an orchestra. Well, let's do it. There you and go. And we partner and we do it. You know? And I know we have some clips to watch today, too. Maybe we can show a little bit of what we do with our upcoming Christmas concert. And we're multidisciplinary, too. You know, that piece that Hugo referred to, you know, is based on H.P. Lovecraft story. So we've got literature in there. At Scary Music, we had um, the co-creator of Night of the Living Dead there uh, to meet people and judge our costume contest. So we're always looking for really cool and creative ways to incorporate all the arts into what we do. So let's circle back to the holiday concert. So I understand that again this year EQT is going to be the corporate sponsor for the holiday concert. This is what the fifth year in the row perhaps that they've done at that? At least the fifth, yeah. At least the fifth. So can you tell us Hugo about the holiday theme? It's called Ho 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 but do you have a theme of certain types of music and maybe some of the pieces? Well, we, we certainly have the traditional Christmas pieces that you'd want to hear. You know, it, it, we wouldn't be doing our, our job if, if we did all experimental Christmas music, <laughs> but we do some experimental and fun, and we'll do a couple Trans-Siberian Orchestra numbers. So we'll have electric guitars and, you know, drum set and, and, and bass really rocking out side by side with maybe Tchaikovsky. This one, we're going to pit Tchaikovsky Nutcracker music against Duke Ellington's version. Wow. So we're going to have a jazz orchestra play after the, the symphony plays, sort of have a battle of the bands, if you will. Mm. And I know we have a couple clips here uh, from past Christmas concerts. Uh, I don't know if we have time to run any of that. We'll put up the bugle, what is that called? Bugle? Bugler's Holiday. Holiday. Leroy Anderson, Bugler's Holiday. It features three of our trumpets and the orchestra backs them up and it is just a Christmas gas. We're well, also let's doing listen. Holiday for Strings too, yeah. yeah. So we can listen on that for a few minutes.
Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's nice up tempo. It really features three of our fine trumpeters, certainly. And then we have another clip as well, a little more traditional, if you will, not so pops oriented. Uh, a snippet from Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. And if those of you that have seen the ballet, uh, you know some of these favorite, um, famous character dances. And I think we sure. have a character dance here, uh, the Russian dance. Maybe we could just look a little okay, bit at good. that. And we have one of our local dance troops that uh, danced to it. So looking forward to seeing a snippet of that. invited three local dance troops and they all had different numbers that they got to dance to. Wonderful. Yeah, and, and we're constantly looking to involve the community and that's one such element. And you'll notice the dancers were pretty young. So that's, sure. that's exactly mm -hmm. what we want to do. We want to create the music lovers of tomorrow. So we provide the WSO musicians creating the music, but we also have guests to round out the program for that entertainment value. So, Hugo, what about the next two concerts? We have two more coming up, one in March and one in May. Tell me a little bit about those. Well, we are bringing back that rock and roll yes. themed concert. I'm very excited about it. I have an arrangement that's being written specifically for us of all music of the, the group Chicago. Wow. A lot of brass, a lot of fun, a lot of tunes. Some of know. you young ones out there might not realize who Chicago is, but, but once you, you would it, like it. But you'd <laughs> like it. That's right. That's the beauty. You know, you, you learn uh, new things and you learn to like it. And I think we'll probably pull out some Queen, a little Freddie Mercury for some fun. Cool. Uh, we're looking at maybe the Moody Blues. Nice. And this one's probably going to be more popular than classical by far, though. And then the final concert is a 20th, uh, 20th anniversary celebration. That is quite an event, uh, really a milestone for the Washington Symphony Orchestra. And that will be, what, a reprise of some other music that's been played over the years? Or it will be that. I mean, we're going to look at past favorites, audience favorites, mm -hmm. but we're also going to bring back past uh, uh, performers from oh, the wonderful. last 20 years. So we're really looking at uh, appreciating everything we've been for the 20 years that made us, uh, made us successful and, and uh, pay homage and thank all those people that did. Yeah, That's we're going to go through our records and like, like look, you know, what are those young artists competition winners doing now? You know, maybe oh, bring some of those back to play thing. and so forth. Yeah. That would be an absolutely wonderful thing to be able to bring back some of the guests, some of the winners of the youth competition. Absolutely. That yeah. would be tremendous. That would be tremendous. So, Adam, why don't you give us another rundown of the where to get tickets, some pricing information, um, a little bit more information to wrap it up. Well, you can get tickets uh, via our website, washsim.org, W-Y-S-H-S-Y-M dot O-R-G. Uh, we also advertise tickets on our Facebook and Instagram uh, accounts as well, and YouTube. Uh, you can always find our web address on there and, and points back to tickets. But, you know, if you, if you go to your local libraries, both Citizens Library in Washington and um, the library right here in Peters, Peters Township, um, you, can, you can get tickets there. Just go up, um, and I believe they only take cash or check there yeah, at the library. Yeah, cash or check usually at the library. But if you want to pay by card, the best way to do that is via the website. Um, and you can do, you can call by phone too and pay by card at one eight 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 seven one tickets uh, If I said that too fast for you, just go to the website. The, that number will be there as well. It's on the poster you'll see at the libraries if you want to do it by phone with your credit or debit card. And you know, we always have plenty of tickets at the door for cash or check as well. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a really big venue. Uh, don't think we're in a danger of selling out either performance, but you know, do you really want to stand in line uh, for 10, 20 minutes when you can be out walking around, uh, meeting with your friends and seeing everything else we have going on? Because we do have a pre-concert, we haven't mentioned that yet, but for Ho 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 with the WSO, the Washington Jazz Orchestra, a half hour earlier each day is going to do a, a pre-concert of, of Christmas music and then we might have some other little pop-up ensembles uh, playing throughout intermission and other times. So you don't really want to be stuck in line if, if you don't have to be. Well so. and Adam, one thing we didn't touch on, but we do the holiday concert twice. Yes. We do it on a Saturday evening and then we do it again on a Sunday afternoon. So people have an option of which way they want to go. Oh absolutely. So it really does give you a lot of options for 
getting the family on maybe. And because it's a live show, it's a little bit different every time. There you, you know, go. And, and we've got the jazz orchestra there. And it's, you know, that I, it's not unusual. I see people buy tickets for both shows because it, it, it's a great experience. It's a great good. time. You know, someone might, you know, a couple might come by themselves Saturday night and then bring the kids uh, or the whole family on Sunday. And it, it's just it's a great time. We've to seen generations come through, oh, that's absolutely. for sure. <laughs> Well, we're going to get close to the end of the program. I'd like to thank you, Adam, and Hugo both for coming and talking about the WSO with the people here in Peters and the rest of the listening and viewing audience. Um, if you're looking for a fun way to kick off the festive December month, the Ho 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 concert is a great way to get into the spirit. And once you come and hear the orchestra, we believe you'll know why we say the WSO is something wonderful in Washington County. We hope to see you there. Now we're going to play off with one of our other clips. Yes, and we, this is <clears throat> quite often we will end our Christmas concert with uh, guest high school choirs singing the Hallelujah, Hallelujah Chorus, so from Handel's Messiah. And uh, what a festive uh, way to end the evening. It's, it's, it's hard to top it. It's, it's definitely a very moving performance so perhaps we could have a listen and thank you all for coming we hope to see you at the either of the two concerts thanks very much for tuning in mm -hmm.